This is a Storm Tracker 16 special report. Oh, just Kurt Aaron. I'm working on this Sunday night. We're tracking this storm that we've been talking about all week long. We really started diving in depth about Wednesday and Thursday, and it still looks like it's going to change over to snow, and that could impact our morning commute on Monday. Hope you're having a great weekend, and let's talk about how you may be impacted on that Monday morning commute. As you can see on the satellite radar image, there's a long line of showers. Everything is moving to the northeast. And that's because it's a stalled frontal boundary that's sitting over our region. So that's what you're looking at right there. And yes, we're starting to see that colder air now slamming into that moisture. And that's why we're seeing that changeover in some spots to wintry mix. And then eventually all of us, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll see snow. So the heavy rain right now is coming down over the Poconos. Remember when we were talking about it, it's this area here where we thought we would see the highest rainfall totals. And it still looks like that's going to be the case as we head into the overnight. So some heavy rain bands falling across Mount Pocono, Stroudsburg, Broadheadsville, Blooming Grove, get ready, you got another round, so does Lackawaxen. And we just had some uh, downpours here in our backyard, just south of Scranton from that same line that was moving east, uh, northeast as well. And then we look up in that northwest corner, places like Sullivan County, northern Lycoming County, Tioga, Bradford. This is where we're trying to see that mix out. Right now it's just fog and some rain but it will eventually change over to, uh, as I mentioned before, those rain showers. So let's just take a look at a few spots. Uh, there's like Cumming County Camp, and we just showed you there. It's rain, and that's a live view. You can see the headlights from the cars going on around in the background. Uh, if it were snowing, we would see that right now. So it hasn't quite changed over there yet, but we'll continue to watch that area for sure. And then uh, just look at a couple of other spots here. That's uh, camera four. Okay, let's switch that one to camera four, and we're doing this live with our rundown. So, yeah, there's Scranton, and that's showing some uh, raindrops on the lens there. But, again, we're not seeing any of that snow just yet. It's going to take a few more hours for that to move through. Let's go ahead and look at future clouds and radar. So here we are, 830. We're looking at that line. That line's going to slowly keep pushing southeast. You see that line right there? And so by midnight, 1, 2 o'clock over the Wyoming Valley, which we've changed over now to snow. And that snow is going to linger thanks to another wave riding along that front right there. You kind of see it push to the left. You see it withdraw. Williamsport's clear. And then that push off to the left there, northwest, that's another wave that's passing along this front. That's why you see that. And then there's 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30, 6 o'clock. And there it looks like 8 o'clock. Notice, though, during our morning commute, central Pennsylvania, you folks in the Williamsport area, Lock Haven, Lewisburg, this is going to be wrapped up by 5, 6 o'clock in the morning out there. But it's going to last longer over eastern Pennsylvania. So that's why I've been saying eastern PA could, in fact, uh, have some slick roads, sidewalks, issues like that. Just look at a couple of uh, models. Here's one model. And this is the Euro model, which I happen to like a lot, especially when it comes to snow. This is showing the potential for about one to four inches of snow over eastern Pennsylvania. And notice it's really that northeast corner that we're talking about as far as snow goes. So, but you come out here into central Pennsylvania and those numbers really drop off quite a bit. So this looks like this is going to be more of an impact for this area over here than, than, than it is so much for um, <clears throat> parts of central Pennsylvania. Okay, Mark's asking, how much snow in southern Lackawanna County at an elevation of 1550? Well, Mark, I am at an elevation in my house of exactly 1500 in my driveway. So you and I likely going to see a little bit more snow. We could be on the higher end, maybe as much as four to five inches of snow by the time it's all said and done. And uh, again, this is elevation dependent on the snow. The highest numbers will be on the hilltops and lower numbers uh, in the valley. So there's just one model. I want to show you how much additional rainfall we could be looking at on top of that. There you go, about a third of an inch there in Mill Hall to maybe a, as much as an inch there in Lakeville. So uh, a third of an inch Danville, 81 hundredths there in Scranton. So we're not done with the rain just yet. We're going to continue to see those rain showers. And the other thing I want to mention, we haven't talked a lot about it because uh, <clears throat> we've been focused so much on snow and rain totals that, uh, again, I want to show you future wind speeds. And this is the highest wind gust, I think, to 
tomorrow will be likely between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So there's winds, steady wind speeds tomorrow at noon. And that looks uh, pretty impressive. If we look at peak wind gust, see where they spike out now. Yeah, they're still spiking out at noontime at about 29 miles an hour. That's in the valleys. Um, that's not on the hilltops. The hilltops are going to be even stronger. I've got the hilltops marked right here. So, yeah, there you go, 36 miles an hour. Uh, when do the winds start, Lisa? Uh, the winds will start picking up overnight tonight as that colder air approaches. So we'll continue to watch it. Yeah, I would secure your trash cans, uh, your, hollow, uh, your holiday lights. If you have, uh, you know, Christmas lights out there, make sure they're secure because, as you can see, by, two, uh, by 4 o'clock in the morning, if you are an elevation like Mark, who asked that previous question, at 1,500 feet, you're looking at a wind gust of 30 miles an hour at 4 in the morning. And then by 10 o'clock till 2 in the afternoon, you're looking at peak wind gusts in the mid-30s. So Chase saying some mixing in the mountains already. Thank you, Chase. I appreciate the update. We're going to continue to see that mix as we head through the uh, overnight. My big concern is that morning commute because by then, I think it will be wrapped up in central Pennsylvania. But eastern Pennsylvania could be looking at that new graph that we just I just put together here just to show you. We're going to have that wintry mix that Chase just mentioned going over to snow. And I know it looks like just cloudy icons there, but those are actually some snow icons. And uh, it's snowing in parts of that. But notice the temperature at 2 a.m. is at 38. At 1 p.m. is down to 37. Just got home from Long Island a few hours ago. The rain and fog was horrible. Well, sorry to hear that, Jackie. We had some pretty dense fog here as well. And that fog was uh, thick as pea soup out there. It was pretty dense. So we're going to see uh, a little bit more of that fog until that wind really starts to pick up. Um, just want to show you this. Again, we have that flood watch in effect um, and winter weather advisory. The winter weather advisory is underneath all the green counties you see. They're both for eastern Pennsylvania. Will there be enough snow to shovel? Well, Charles, I think it depends on where you live. If you're in higher elevations over eastern Pennsylvania, yes. Uh, you know, you would have to shovel two, three, four inches of snow for sure. Um, but if you're out in central Pennsylvania and you're in, more in the valley cities, I think it's going to wrap up there first. And again, I can go back to these numbers here just to show you. Uh, this is one model. Matter of fact, I'm going to open this up real fast. <clears throat> when I say open it up, I have access to several models that we can look at together here. Um, okay, so that's the Euro. I told you before, that's actually like one of my favorite models when it comes to snow forecasting. But let's go ahead and look at the GFS. Now, the GFS has a little bit more in central Pennsylvania, but one thing I will say about the GFS, that model sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes is on the higher end of things. Uh, another model that I like, GFS, by the way, is Global Forecasting Systems Model. North American model, or what we call NAM. So there's the NAM right there. And no, actually, that's the GFS. I'm going to change that one. So let's go up here to the RPM. Okay, here's another model that we use. You know the future radar that you see us using all the time, and I was just using it? That's this model here. This is Graph, the longer range model. It goes out about 72, 60 to 72 hours. And this is showing very little snow in central Pennsylvania, but it's showing about an inch to maybe three inches over parts of eastern Pennsylvania. So that's pretty much in line with what the Euro was that we were looking at. The GFS was a little bit higher, but I like it when models come together like that. It gives you a better feel for what's gonna really transpire out there. Okay, so that's just a look at a couple of the models that we use. And speaking of future radar, let me just scroll down here and show you. Just bear with me for a second. And I wanna thank T-Dog for uh, putting this together for us. I've been very, very busy, so he, took the time to uh, <clears throat> set this all up. So we appreciate you, T-Dog, thank you. All right, so if you missed it earlier, here's future clouds and radar. And this is showing, notice that heavier rain over Stroudsburg, Milford, that's 10 o'clock tonight. And that's why I said before, this is where we're going to see our highest rainfall totals is in those areas that you see in the red, or in the green and yellow. And then that colder air moves in and it takes, it's gonna take some time, but eventually we're gonna see a change over to all snow. And as I was mentioning earlier, we've got several waves that are passing along this stalled frontal boundary. And that's why we see these, these you know, snow showers, rain showers, fizzle out, Lock Haven, Williamsport, and those areas. But then they also come back through as those waves, those lows pass over. So, and then look at that. By 9.30, 10 o'clock, it's out of eastern Pennsylvania as well. So 
that's what we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, we've talked about the winds. We talked about rainfall. Uh, we talked about snow. Uh, one thing I want to show you for tomorrow, and I started it at 2 in the morning, these are wind chills for Monday. So look at that. Most of the day, we're actually going to be in the mid-20s wind chills, even though our actual air temperatures may be in the 30s. It's going to be in the 20s, so uh, we're going to continue to watch it. All right, we're going to wrap this up, but I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, <clears throat> okay, hang on one second. Jackie's asking another. Why do you think uh, it is sometimes the various models are so different? And their forecast precipitation. We see that all the time. Um, and I've actually showed them on the air where I've showed four main models North American, GFS, Euro, and uh, say our future radar model, the graph that I just showed you. Um, I've showed them all on the air side by side. And it's unbelievable sometimes how much they, they are different from one another. Their algorithms are a little different. They come up with things a little bit differently. But yes, it's a, it's a situation that. I've been dealing with for 28 years when it comes to models uh, differing. Which radar is the best to listen to? Most likely to be right. Um, you mean radar as in what's occurring now up in the present or future radar as in the one that we show for the upcoming? And I think that's the one you're, you're referring to. So uh, we use the graph uh, model and it's a model that I really, really like. Uh, and that's what gives us our future clouds and radar. Sometimes I'll mix it up with the Euro, but yeah, that's it right there, the, the one you're looking at. So uh, you're welcome, William. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching us, paying attention. Before I leave, I just want to show you this, because once we get through tonight and tomorrow morning, <clears throat> then look at the stretch of weather. High pressure is going to build in here tomorrow. That's why it's going to be breezy and colder. You're welcome, and thank you for the, for the, for the kind words. Um, it's going to get breezy and colder tomorrow. 40, that, that's going to be a midnight high. Because by the afternoon, as I showed you, our temperatures are actually going down. But look at that stretch of weather. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday and Sunday. Looking really nice. So, yep, we got some yucky weather. Yes, there's going to be delays tomorrow morning. And I want you to be safe out there. The snow-covered ro roads, you know, you don't want to mess around with them. Just take your time. Um, I know we already have school delays, so that's good. Um, I think we'll have more delays in eastern Pennsylvania than central PA, but it doesn't mean you ha can't have problematic areas in central Pennsylvania as well. So, But that stretch of weather looks amazing starting Tuesday, and uh, really looking forward to that. I know it's a little cooler, but it is December, and I'll take mid-40s and sunshine all day long. As you know, the weather we can have in northeastern and central Pennsylvania can go crazy sometimes. So I want you to have a great night. We'll be live with more updates at 10 and 11. WNEP 2 at 10, WNEP at 11. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening.